Here we go! Hello and welcome to this Cinema 40 and Octane tutorial. So today we're going to be creating the, what I like to call, Oostenbroek effect. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce the name at least, but Rick Oostenbroek created these sick kind of weird renders and they're awesome and they're very abstract and they've actually a much more simple method to obtain the result than you would think and well, I'm going to show you how to do it. So, Roger Kilimanjaro made a time lapse, making them in redshift. Gave that a very eagle-eyed watch, and I'm going to bring what I managed to reverse engineer from that into Octane. We're going to create it here. I don't think anybody's made a tutorial speaking thoroughly about these kind of renders, and I feel like soon they're going to be the next giant sphere, tiny little guy in front of it. Now, when renders have potential like that, we have to make a tutorial. We have. Oh, yeah. A couple things before the tutorial starts though, apparently 80% of people who watch my tutorials aren't subscribed, which means you're probably not subscribed, and I really want to keep making these, and I want to grow my channel more, and my assets, so please subscribe and check out my assets, I'll probably have a bundle of these project files up, and you can go check that out there. The next tutorial, we're going to be using Volume Builder, and I also have a video lined up for a bunch of tips you didn't know in Cinema 4D, for example, one of them is changing the splash image, completely useless. But it's a tip so there's that to look forward to and without further ado let's get started on this tutorial okay now we're in cinema 40 here i do also want to point out that there is a sale at the minute on my self ice store just a, a kind of quarantine sale i know everyone's stuck inside at the minute but i've been meaning to put this up for a while everything's gonna be around 25 percent off for a little while just so everything's a little bit cheaper if you're looking to get some assets to help in your 3d discoveries but to carry on if we just drop in a circle here the methods of modeling this are through sweeps because I'll show you in a second, but if we actually put a twist deformer on a normal torus, completely messes with the kind of integrity and the um, pipe radius. So what we want to do is just drop in twist and just for the sake of the tutorial, I will uh, put it just below the circle there. You can see if I start bumping up that there, um, it's it's gonna kind of thin out uh, the torus, and we don't want that. So if you just, and that's what happens if you put it on a normal torus. So if you just drop it in a circle, it completely gets rid of that problem, and now we kind of have our shape here. So that's kind of the main shape that uh, most people use with these renders. And if you just set this to natural and maybe put it to about eighty, so the kind of result you want is uh, ever so slightly driven by the shape, typically the way I was creating them, I didn't like it to go uh, too crazy. You can kind of soften it up a bit by putting the height up. I didn't like it to go too nuts. I just like to kind of make a Pringle kind of shape or something. Uh, but if we drop in a camera here and we just put it kind of to the center of the world, but a little bit further back, so we zero out these except for the Z. And then I'll maybe mess with this a little bit more. And that was tab I was hitting to snap through everything there. And what you can also do is you can rotate the deformer around, which can be a lot of fun for animation. So maybe I'll just get something a bit like that. And we'll get Octane on the go. And for kind of like an Instagram layout render, we could do 1080 by 1080. And we'll come to 248 by 8 by 8 by 10. Now, the general lighting I did use was just a HDRI and these HDRIs always blow your scene out but if you just load it in whatever HDRI you've got make sure it's evenly putting light across the image and it looks quite nice and then we'll just put in a texture environment make it black make sure it's above the HDRI and make it visible and now we're kind of in the dark and I'm just gonna make this a little bit thicker uh, not too thick because what's going to get us the main look is a displacement noise. So we use maybe about 50 centimeters in the noise. So you don't really want to, you think that's, you know, 50 on top of that, but that much. So you don't really want to go too nuts. But what we'll do is we'll drop in a metallic texture. And in our materials here, 
we're just gonna pipe that roughness up and then we'll grab a displacement and we'll grab a noise and what we'll do is we'll come to about 4k just now and we'll put the displacement in the displacement channel i found that a bunch of them work quite well roger i managed to clock that he used electric in his little time lapse and for the first few i did that is what i was experimenting with and it did look nice we'll just go with that and if you just put about three more zeros in the end here it's going to nicely remove the seam but also instantly give us the texture so that's the kind of texture we're looking at here and if we're coming up to about 50 like i said we're going to get a nice amount of variation and it's going to look quite nice cool so what we can do now is set up the color now we are going to use a gradient and this is where things get a bit you know you play with it here and there until you get the colors you want but typically i just what you, what you can actually do is use this noise and plug it in there and it's kind of the way you want to do it approaching the final render it will also break the seam but and i'm not sure why this one breaks the seam but it may it's so slow to work in and it gives you really horrible feedback when you're moving the, the pointers here so i tend to just work with this noise and I, on a few occasions i did render out these ones as well it still gives you brilliant results so what we'll do is we'll just put this in the specular here and if we turn off lock aspect ratio and put it to about 10 and then kind of bring this down to somewhere around like 0.13 and then bump up the contrast and you just gonna want to mess with gamma a bit and now we can start piping some colors in here so and quite a lot of them i tend to go for like quite a nice gray maybe have it coming into a yellow and from the yellow sorry that went on my other monitor for some reason uh, into a purple or even a red and done it again even a red so we've got kind of like a fiery look going on and as you can see the gamma is a big controller we could just kind of do something a bit like that and assuming i'm going to leave this texture like that now right we'll just get the noise put it in the gradient and if you look down here it should ever so calmly get rid of itself the whole texture will take a bit of a different look but when this decides to update as you can see it's very smooth now and uh, it is a bit of a different look and if you can bear working just as an example it's just doesn't respond to you so i don't like that and i'm on a pretty high-end machine so god knows what's the cause of that maybe if you magically come to 256 you can move it but it's still quite jerry so at least this is doable i'm just going to continue to work underneath this noise right now and i'm maybe going to take the red back to a purple i just think that looks a little bit cooler and you don't really want to mess with the octaves or the omega because they will bring you can maybe take the omega down sorry the octaves down actually because they'll just give you detail and that's kind of the last thing we want right now so what we can do next is actually mess with the hdri a little bit because if you mess with it you can get parts of it kind of blacking out and fading away and that looks really nice and if we start messing with the shape a bit till we get something that maybe suits the look we've got now as you can see here a bit like that so what we can do is once you have rotated it so that's me just rotate it around and rotate the twist around and now what we could do is come flying in there on the focal length you could maybe even come back out a little bit maybe a bit more what i'll do is i'll have this camera We'll make another one and we'll come up for a close up. One, two, maybe one, one, five. And then you can set your focal depth, give it a post on there, bring it a lot, and you can just transfer that over. And then you can see you've got a pretty nice render. And if you ask me, I would be happy with that. I would put that on my Instagram and well we made it awfully quick and the way i was getting the close-ups was just kind of doing things like this and then maybe doing f2 perspective nb 
and that's E to change the axis there and maybe duplicate it twist it a bunch more and then just kind of rearrange it so if you kind of like interlace them a bit yeah just like that can make for some very very interesting looks and then you can just kind of focus in on what part you want and you've got something that you would never guess is a torus at all and uh, i think that's what confuses people a lot of the time with these renders and then you can even come back to the lighting again and get something that now suits this angle and yeah they're very striking renders and they look very nice now you saw how simple that is we can all just pack all these up here and uh, maybe duplicate the first camera and we could make another one so what we could do is just pop this in a sweep and we'll go much quicker this time and then we can make it natural make it about maybe like 150 this time uh, put a twist in there holding shift fit parent we could maybe make this one a lot more twisty and we can for speed's sake no we'll make a new material and we'll pop it on the sweep and i think it's always good to make new materials or to make new project files uh in general just to get in the habit of actually committing the action and then it kind of gets into your head a little bit better so then we just put this noise in there put the noise in the displacement come to a 4k and then maybe come up to about 50 what we could use Luca this time and maybe come to about a hundred thousand and then we can hook up the gradient and the noise into the roughness and of course just sort out the scale of the noise maybe even go to about 25 and we'll just shoot this down here and mess with the contrasting gamma until we're getting what we want to see so i've put that in the roughness <laughs> we want to put that in the specular although putting it in the roughness does make for some cool looks so i really love this kind of matte look that goes on on the edge here when you get really quite big extruding parts of the displacement so maybe this time i'll go for a bit of a orange look that was one i didn't actually really get around to trying we could go for orange on black. We can see how that looks. So maybe what I want to do is flip these. And then we could get a little bit of purple. And a little bit of red. And we could have it fading back to black black and then we can just reduce the contrast so it's quite a bit of a softer shift between them all and mess with the scale a little bit maybe make it a bit bigger a bit smaller just find something you like and we can get back to messing around with the shape so it doesn't usually take too much messing with as i showed with the first one but it's just nice to flip things around and don't try to be a perfectionist with it at all because you'll drive yourself nuts just get something cool I'll come up to 8k and then we can maybe duplicate the camera again and come in really close I'll hold 3 and right click could spin around a little bit Spin the HDRI, get some nice lighting. You can see the seam there as well, which is always a bit annoying, but putting up the scale on the Y helps get rid of it. And of course, like I said, plugging the other noise in does as well. But that depends how you want to work and what kind of workflow you want, to be honest. Usually, I just work with the octane noise, I just find it a little bit easier. If you do want to animate it, 
you can just set the animation speed to something you want and to get a constant animation speed so you, as an example you could put it to 0.5 and then come to the end of your timeline and put it to like 0.51 and then it's going to be a relatively constant speed and that's how i kind of got that little uh, clip in the beginning now when it comes to adding backgrounds the way i approached it was just a plane with a bend deformer and if you fit that to the parent and and i just did this and could maybe put a couple more zeros there oh. and if we hit f2 again come back to that angle we drop this in a subdivision so increase the height here for that to parent again we just bring down the height and then bring it back and behind now we have a nice backdrop and if we just pop in for example a diffuse texture and we put in a rgb spectrum on the diffuse and Maybe make it like a purple or one of the colors that's on. That looks nice on the torus. Maybe a yellow. Could maybe make it glossy. Put the roughness. Bring it a little bit closer just to get some shadows and a little bit of darkness kind of around and behind it. And then mess with that, I kind of like that highlight along here, so I might leave that and then see what looks we can get, something nice and bright I can maybe bring this down what I'll do is turn up my aspect ratio and edge and in a matter of minutes you have what I would call a beautiful render that's background and you see we can twist this about and you can give the render a completely different look in seconds it is entirely up to you now it is also up to you if you want to deal with that seam work around or not by using the default noise but if you are liking the color results you're getting from this uh, from the octane noise it's easy enough to work around a mix of animating the twist rotation as well as the animation speed it makes for some pretty cool animations so that's what i'm going to leave you with of course i did make a subsurface scattering version and for that one i did use some octane lights for the rest it was pretty much purely just hdris and uh, maybe some of the scenes that were in pitch black i used a little bit of lights here or there but for the most part it was all hdris if you're dealing with subsurface scattering of course you use a light i did just place like a backlight behind it and above it and of course the hdri on top of that i think i'm gonna put all these project files i think i'm gonna put all these project files up on myself i am a patreon so go to either one of those and uh, get a hold of all these things and experiment with them and experiment with them see how i approach them if you're struggling I will be back with that volume builder tutorial I mentioned at the start of the video. That is going to be really interesting. I've got some really cool results from that. And I will see you next week for that. I hope you're staying safe in this lockdown. Uh, wherever you are, I'm wishing you the best. Thanks for staying to the end. And I'll see you next week for another tutorial. Bye.